welcome to class number eight of Sculpey 101. Now, if you have not followed me in the previous entries, you can click here to catch up with where we are, although this is more or less a standalone class. Now, had you been watching the previous episodes, you may be wondering, didn't that Josh Foreman guy, didn't he, uh, didn't he not have a Southern drawl? And I'll tell you what, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're just joining me now, I fooled you! Ha <laughs> ha! Fooled you! <sighs> if you have watched before, I'm just feeling a little punchy. I, I was at a, a friend's party the other night and did a little karaoke. And whatever the unholy juxtaposition of some of the songs that, that I sang, uh, kind of messed up my voice and just kind of made me feel, feel Southern. It was... Uh, I did, I did a Creed song, you know, with arms wide open, oh no, so you know, that, and then, and then I followed up with uh, Enya, and so, uh, whatever the, the vocal rangers required, uh, long story short, God revoked my, my vocal license, and I think he was right to do so. So, let's talk about texture stamps. There are several varieties and uh, we'll cover them one by one, shall we? And I'll give you some cool hands-on demonstrations. I got some good ideas here. Okay, so first of all, there's the stuff you can buy at the store. These are usually available at various um, craft stores and such. Uh, you know, it's just a thing. You, you lay your clay in and you pull it out. In fact, watch this. I'll do it now. Right, lay that in, pop it out. Aha, leaves, brilliant. I'm a brilliant artist now, yay! Okay, and then, um, this is a, a cool one, it's like a little wheel thing. And you can swap them out for, for different kinds and you roll them over the clay. So we'll be playing with those a little bit. Uh, the other kind are just found objects. And these can be anything that has a texture on them that won't stick to the clay. Um, like this, I think it's some kind of eraser. I don't know, but it's got a really, really fun texture on it. You know, I found this at a gift shop at Ocean Shores. Uh, this is a Dremel uh, polish wheel, and it makes nice little stippling effects. So, uh, if you always keep a creative eye out for these kinds of things, they're they're always fun to stumble across and think, hey, you know, that that avocado would make great ogre skin, that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, there's the do-it-yourself, make-it-yourself types. Here's an example of a, a, a rubbery one that I did. And the way I made this was I started with a piece of Sculpey, I did my texture on it, and then baked that. And after it was hard, I put rubber over that. I, you can also just use another lump of Sculpey. In this case, I took my soft Sculpey, I plastered it on there, pulled it off, put it on the other side, pulled it off, and then baked that. And so now I've got this little tool. Um, here's another couple varieties. These ones uh, I made just from, I think it was flexible Sculpey. It's, it's really not very flexible at all. At one time it may have been a little more so, but anyway, I just jabbed it a million times with a little needle tool to give it some texture that I thought would would give a, this kind of felt look to the costumes that I did for these guys. And you can see uh, I custom designed the shape so they would fit in all the little cracks and crevices and places where I needed to get that that texture in there. And then another way you could do it is you could, I mean this is the cast, I don't have the originals, but I, I made three feathers, right? I laid them down in a little box and then I poured uh, plaster over those when the plaster dried, pulled it out, pulled out the leaves or feathers, and then I stamped a ton of feathers for this angel statue that I've done. So that those are the basic variety. Now we're going to get into some specific applications. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be continuing on this crazy uh, half old dude head sculpture 
I mentioned before, I, I have this sort of fever dream idea of like he's got a box on his head with an arm coming out that's like touching him and making him old. So I'm going to continue along with that project. Um, I decided to make it a vase instead of a box. So, uh, because I thought I could do some cool stamping stuff. I blocked in the vase just out of regular white Sculpey, the really cheap stuff. And um, so that I'm going to put a layer of, of nicer Sculpey over this and then we'll do our stamp work on that. So, let's get going. Oh, as an aside, I was at, the, uh, I was at a um, thrift store the other day and I came across this little heart vase thing. And I thought to myself, my, what, what convenient little stand for this dude. So the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put a skin of Sculpey over this and do like a leather texture, give him a, like a leather jerkin or something like that. So, and the pot will go on his head like so. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be good times. Stick around. This is going to be fun. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is figure out where this guy's uh, neck and shoulders are going to live. I just stuffed aluminum foil and then stabbed a hole in it for his neck. But I don't want his head just kind of floating in there. Okay, so I've got these strips of Sculpey. I put it through a pasta roller. You can use a regular roller too. Um, and so I'm going to basically just cover the front of him with a sheet of this. In the next lesson, we're going to be going over hair and fur. I think I'm going to give them a fur cape, so I'm not worried about the back right now. All right, so let's make a leather texture. Now, the first thing I hope you've learned from all the previous other classes before you start something like this, get reference. So I like to grab um, I'll, anything that catches my eye, even if it's not necessarily exactly what I'm going for, just because there'll be little elements that, that I'll pick up here and there and I'll think maybe combining things and that sort of stuff. So I like to have a, a texture sheet that's got a lot of variety on it. So um, so in this case, I don't think I'm going to do these. Those look a lot like his kind of old man skin already. So I think I'm going to do this kind of crocodile looking texture. So basically, I just got to cut myself a little squarish section. Okay, now I'm taking my rubbing alcohol. And smoothing down all those crisp edges, those overly crisp edges. Okay, that'll work for the main part. And then I'm going to do a, um, a seam that I can repeat down the front. So I looked at a couple uh, references for different ways that uh, leather seaming can work. And um, I, think, I think for the sake of demonstration, I'll just stick with a pretty simple one. All right, now I'm gonna pop these in the oven for about 15 minutes on about 230 degrees and uh, come back and we'll do the rubber part. 
All right, back from the oven. Texture's ready to go. Let's look at a couple products for making rubber stamps. We've got this stuff called Poyo Putty. And this comes from Smooth On. I think you can get it um, on Amazon. And it's a two part. And look at that. That's pretty much dried and crystallized. Okay. We're not going to use Poyo Putty today. So, we also have Amazing Mold Putty. This stuff is amazing. Um, and this uh, you can get at Michaels and Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby. Pretty much anywhere they sell crafty type stuff. And this stuff's really easy because it's just a uh, one to one ratio mix. And you simply knead it together for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then you've got about a minute to work with it. So the shapes that I tend to make are kind of uh, vaguely egg shaped. press it in from the middle and I try to squeeze the material um, out, or well, down and out. And then I kind of wiggle it as it goes. And it's always nice to leave yourself a little grip. Once I get it down around the edges, about as, as far as I'm happy with, I pull it back just a hair so that there's a little bit of a, of a lip with texture around the edges. That really helps when you're trying to uh, blend from one patch to another or run up on uh, folds and wrinkles and stuff like that. And then it sets up in just a couple of minutes. It says 20 minutes, but I've used it much sooner than that. While that's setting up, I'm going to uh, put a skin of Sculpey around my vase here. Here's the, um, the reference that I got. I looked up um, the kind of headpiece that people have when they um, have a heavy object on their head. It's kind of a, a loop or ring of fabric it looks like. Um, I was really interested by this kettle here and the way the legs actually helped balance it on there. I thought that was interesting. I think um, I think because the next episode we're going to go into um, no, not the next one. The one after that, we're going to go into embedding found objects and stuff like that. So at that point, I think I'm going to give him some kind of elaborate headdress poking up out of his scarf that'll hold the pot in place. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm just going to put the skin on there. So that we can texture it.
Okay, I think that's pretty good for a ancient Grecian urn. Now we'll move on to the leather. I think this stuff is ready to go. Uh, especially with Super Sculpey Firm, this isn't quite as big a deal with uh, regular Super Sculpey. Um, but you want to make sure that the surface is pretty warm before you stamp it or it's not going to stamp very well. So, pretty much just rubbing the surface to transfer some of my body warmth onto it. Now here's a part, because I left this wrinkle in here, where it would be nice to make another tool off of this that's more like a, a rolled snake or something like that. But because I did that edge, I think I can get away with just kind of squeezing up along the side of it. Okay, let's see how this little seam guy works. This clay is just too hard. But I think you get the idea, right? I mean, if you didn't have such super textured clay and if it was softer, it would work better. I'm just going to go in and do the seam by, uh, the seam by hand. It's not like that particular technique takes long. So one really easy way to make cloth is with cloth. Now you could just put the cloth on the sculpture I suppose, but um, if you want to get sculptural with it, it's pretty cool to put it on the clay. So I've got this clay that I've squeezed out right? and essentially I'm just going to sandwich it between two pieces of cloth. and then run it through my pasta machine. Set it really thin. Oh, looks like I set it too thin. Let's try that again. Although that did make a very interesting billowing shape, doesn't it? I wonder if that might work. This could be one of those happy accidents. Let's find out. Oh, a uh, quick tip to preserve the um, fabric texture, use some gloves so that you're not squishing your fingerprints onto it. So I gotta plan out and make sure his turbine's gonna work with his vase. doesn't look far from um, this reference. Let's see if I can get the folds and, and curves and stuff a little smaller. That's the downside to using real fabric on sculptures that are not life size is that the the way fabric bends and folds and stuff is kind of a dead giveaway of the scale. So I hate those collectible figures that have cloth pants and jackets and stuff. Like, a cape is okay, but once you start mimicking the, the kind of stuff that wraps closely around your body, it just really does not work for me. I think what I might do is use this as a uh, kind of a base layer and then I'll do a, 
a little cleaner scarf around the top of it. I think because I uh, squeezed it too tight, it embedded the fabric, so it's kind of... I'm guessing it's going to continue to stick if I keep trying that. So I'm going to get a different piece of fabric. Or I could just cut part of it off. I should note, if you're just doing a piece of fabric that's going to lay over a body, then you could just press the fabric on one side. But since I'm making a... Uh, a scarf that's going to twist around and stuff. I want the texture on both sides. This time I'm going to set it a little thicker. pretty well for what I'm trying to get across which is this kind of raggedy rag turban thing it's got some interest curling up the the rods that are gonna hold up the pot yeah so I think uh, I think that's good for today's class on texture stamps and uh, join me next time we're going to be doing hair and fur how exciting is that for all you furries and and Harry's. Yeah, so come on back. See you then. Bye.